Hi, welcome to Monroe Live. Uh, my name is Julian Ates. I'm an associate mechanical engineer here at Monroe and Associates. And I'm Antonio Donano. I'm a senior battery engineer. And uh, today we're going to start off a series of uh, somewhere around 10 videos. We'll be looking at uh, home chargers for EVs, specifically level two chargers. Uh, we're going to be starting with the third generation Tesla wall charger. Uh, and before we get into any of the details, uh, we won't be doing much dynamic testing. Uh, for any of these chargers. Uh, we don't have them hooked up or any of the apps uh, to take a look at their actual functionality in charging a vehicle. But Antonio is a uh, Tesla Model Y owner and he uh, understands uh, some of the use for these. So before we get into it, I just wanted to give Antonio a minute to go into some of his personal experience with this device in use. All right, yeah, so we're not going into the user interface experience because there's dedicated YouTube channels for that and we don't want to step on their feet. Um, but what we are going to do is we're going to actually take a part and look at the internals. Um, from a user side though, on this brand, I, am, I have one installed in my home. It is very convenient. The light bar tells you your charging capacity. The cable opens your, car door, your um, charge port and there's a nice connector on the side just to keep everything organized. And everything wraps around so it's even shaped to hold the cord. Mm -hmm. And so you said that you have, uh, well, we here at Monroe and Associates have several chargers, some uh, level or generation two Tesla chargers. I believe we have uh, at least one of these level threes uh, currently, and then you have a level three at home. Level three is a supercharger. Or I'm sorry, the third generation. We have the um, V1 of this right. outside, which has the manual reset on the side, mm -hmm. which is now um, done as an internal circuit. Okay. So we don't have to do the manual reset if there's an over voltage event. Perfect. And for the one that you had installed at your home, uh, what was the installation process like? We obviously know what the inside of this looks like, but getting it installed to an electrical system, what was right. that like? So I moved up here and uh, first thing I did was I got one of these wall chargers because I wasn't sure what the commute would be like, but the electrician himself was, this is his first EV, <clears throat> EV charger install, and he was surprised at how easy it was. The uh, instructions were very easy to follow. There's a wiring guide. The installation of the kit wiring from the breaker box to the charger itself was very straightforward. That's something an electrician should know how to do. Um, but yeah, there's what you wire in from different whichever direction most convenient and it connects to your L1, your ground and your L2. So then as a general overview for those of you who may not be familiar or just need a quick refresher, uh, we want to walk through the three different uh, levels of charging uh, just to contextualize all of the charges we'll be looking at. So there's obviously, as we had mentioned, level one, two, and three. Uh, Antonio here has an example of a level one charger. Antonio, what can you tell us about something like this? So level one charger will go into your standard outlet or it'll go into a 220, uh, like a dryer outlet. It'll charge at about 11 kilowatts per hour? Uh, about a kilowatt. Kilowatt. I one kilowatt per hour. So that's a two to five miles per hour of charging. So mm -hmm. at most, this will keep your battery warm on a cold day. And it'll, if you sit for eight hours, that gets you like 40 miles of range. So right. this is a long period. If you're not going to be there for a while, attempt to charge. Sure. So then the next level up from that would be level two, which is similar to the unit that we have here, the cable we have set off to the side. Uh, this specific charger is a 240 volt, uh, 48 amp. This differs from the uh, second generation Tesla wall charger and that could support up to 80 amps of uh, charging current. However, there have been some modifications on the vehicle side for what current can be accepted for charging. So they've uh, derated these down to 48 amps now. Um, in terms of uh, the uh, kilowatt uh, rating, this is uh, an 11.5 kilowatt charger. Uh, this, as compared to a level one, can add about, I believe Tesla advertises 44 miles of range into your vehicle in about an hour. So compare that to the two to five miles for a level one charger. Um, so level three would be your supercharging. That is your 80 to 350 to 400 to even then, I guess the megawatt charger for the semi would be level four. Mm -hmm. um, but this will get you 80% of your or 20 to 80 in 30 minutes or so. And it is your most readily accessible charger uh, for public use. Right. And that's 20 to 80% of your state of charge within an hour, right. correct? Perfect. 
SQL. So that kind of contextualizes the different levels everything we'll be looking at, including this is gonna be a level two. So with the background there, we'll go ahead and start walking through the actual unit itself and what we found during the teardown. So one of the first things that uh, we'll see is, uh, it's got a very sleek appearance. Uh, this is a uh, glass uh, face plate here. It's uh, removed, it has a series of uh, tabs and locks with only two fasteners on the backside. There's an injection molded polycarbonate uh, backing plate. Uh, this is actually uh, the base model, this uh, white color that it comes in. However, I think for $75, this can be purchased on the, uh, from the Tesla's website in different colors like red, blue, uh, I believe a gray for uh, an aesthetic upgrade. Um, however, just the general appearance of this and the way it's installed is very easy. This is something from a lean design principle we would advocate for instead of using four fasteners, try and use uh, part of your injection molding or your component itself to constrain one end and minimize the number of fasteners that you need. So in terms of installation, this was done very well. Uh, then just with that removed, there is another polycarbonate, a clear polycarbonate uh, cover that is fastened over the top of all the electronics, which you can see inside here. Uh, this PCB, you can see where we have that light indicator Antonio mentioned for the charging state is actually, um, that light is emitted from this PCBA just under the clear polycarbonate shield. Upon removing this, they are sealing the internal electronics from moisture and uh, the environment with a closed cell polyurethane bead. So this is actually quite close to what we saw when we dropped the 4680 pack from the Model Y. It's effectively the same principle. This is applied directly to the part as opposed to having, uh, say, an injection molded channel with a separate injection molded rubber seal that then has to be manually seated into some kind of uh, a feature in the component. So this again, single component, uh, very easy to install and set in place. And uh, once we get inside, I want Antonio to go through some of the electrical content that we found. All right, well, we'll start with this little printed circuit board on top with the light diodes. So in the manual itself, it shows that you have a, to a 60 amp input, but this is a 48 amp charger. So the reason for that is due to electrical code, you can't put a 48 amp on a 50 amp breaker because that's too close to that limit. So you have to have an 80% rule. So 60, 80% of 60 would be that 48 amp point. So if you want a full charge uh, intensity, you want to use a 60 amp breaker. So the flexible cable has a connector is hooked up to a circuit, which is a NFC or near field communication device. We actually looked at this chip a bit closer and confirmed that it is an NFC, not an RFID. And this is used for probably communicating with either phones or cards, but um, this is not a feature I believe is currently active. It might be on certain like commercial chargers or walls connectors, but uh, for most of them it's not, but it is a function that is there. So then as we go down a little further, we have the main PCBA here, which contains various circuit, or uh, I'm sorry, current sensors on the bus bars. So we have a line one and a line two and a ground. Uh, effectively, the way that this will work as opposed to the uh, DC fast charging is this is all going to be AC. So you have your 240 volt AC coming from your home elect uh, electrical system. Uh, this will feed in here. And effectively, what we have is a series of uh, relays and a transformer on the backside. <clears throat> I'm sorry, a transformer up in the uh, upper left of uh, the board here. The transformer is used uh, for voltage regulation circuit that powers all of the controls on the PCBA. So this will be strictly for powering all of the integrated circuits, everything in the PCBA itself. This is not involved in any of the charging current that will be passing through this board. Uh, one additional note, um, just on the end of the PCBA here, is uh, we've actually got a Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, so this is for that wireless connectivity to allow the charger to integrate with your app or um, you know, give diagnostics to the vehicle directly. And that was actually just taped directly to part of the injection molded wall in here. So again, that's a very simple installation uh, and that's also where they're locating the uh, part information. Another interesting thing Antonio had pointed out on the uh, PCBA here, on the back side of the board, uh, there are two unpopulated terminals. These are uh, similar to how you would install a wire to the back of a speaker, for example. 
We're not entirely sure what the purpose of these is. Uh, however, um, they, there's nothing about these located in any of the documentation that uh, we were able to find for this uh, connector, this wall connector. So um, we can't exactly ascertain the function or purpose of those as of yet. But we thought that it was uh, unique and uh, certainly uh, inter an interesting feature of this board. So we have this small little sensor here, which goes right through this hole and shines directly onto the gap between your L1 and your L2. This is a IR sensor or a pyroelectric. We're not sure which one specifically because there's no labels on it. Um, so what this does is it measures temperature and produces an electrical current based on the temperature. So it can be used to measure a heat difference um, between these two lines. And if there's any difference, such as a short or uh, one line may be getting too much current, it'll cause uh, an internal trip as a safety. Mm -hmm. um, which is a neat little feature, feature as opposed to having actual breakers and circuits. Right. Yeah, so a built-in safety component. Right. Uh, and it's very not substantial. It's a very minor component, um, which is uh, nice to see. It's not taking up a whole lot of real estate on the board. <clears throat> uh, and this we had placed in here, this is for the uh, ground terminal. This is the uh, bus bar itself that is uh, installed separate, but this will protrude through the back uh, alongside the line one and line two. So then uh, moving on to the very bottom of this, so this plate would face directly against your wall. Uh, this is where you would uh, mount it. You feed the cable um, oh, from, oh, I'm sorry, from the top. A cable from uh, your home, uh, from your circuit breaker will feed in through the top. And uh, as Antonio mentioned, we have the line one and line two, also the ground. Uh, one nice thing about the way this is designed, and I think, Antonio, this speaks to the experience you had with your electrician, is there are a lot of uh, guided features here to assist with the installation. So we have printed designations for ground, line two, neutral, and line one, along with a terminal torque recommendation of 50 pound feet. Uh, sorry, pound inches or 5.6 Newton meters. Uh, and then injection molded into this top portion. I don't know if you can see that in the light, but they actually also have a uh, bossed, embossed uh, feature to allow you to cut and strip your wires to the correct length as they are inserted into these terminals and screwed down. So there are a lot of uh, embedded assembly aids here that are very nice to see. And overall, the construction is very simple. This is an additional injection molded piece that fits over uh, the top of these bus bars here, uh, and then these fasteners are what lock in the wires and retain them into those terminals. So overall a very simple construction, uh, and it's nice to see that there are some uh, assembly aids in there along with uh, very clear instructions from the manual. In addition to, we also have uh, for mounting the box itself, uh, this uh, guide for where you would have your holes, and you can see that actually lines up with uh, where there are markings on the inside of this injection molded housing. We also had our electronics team go over and do a rough price estimate of all the materials. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll start with the cable. We have 24 foot of relatively thin gauge compared to some of the others. Single phase and your data cable to the connector, the North American charging standard or Tesla connector. Uh, this weighs at least, or on its own, 3.1 kilograms, weighed everything. The electronics are 0.89 kilograms. The housing is 4 kilograms. And in, type, in total, it's uh, 8 kilograms, or about 17, 18 pounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we'll be doing is as we go into the remainder of these, uh, like uh, we had said previously, there will be about 10 of these in total. And we'll be using certain metrics like uh, weight for overall cables or the electronics inside the housings. And we'll be comparing those as a way to benchmark against the Tesla, which we're going to consider as the baseline. Uh, and then we'll be able to uh, glean some insights uh, just uh, from a sort of a high level there. Uh, overall for this charger, from an assembly perspective, uh, just to sort of wrap up with uh, some final notes here, construction wise, it's incredibly simple. You can see just laid out on the table here that uh, from an assembly perspective, there aren't very many discrete components that need to be fit together. Uh, and in terms of uh, you know, fasteners are really only used where necessary and in the quantity that they are necessary for. The use of the molded in features and these stanchions for locating and retaining the 
uh, PCBA is uh, very well done and from a lean design perspective that's something that we like to see. Um, and material choices, there's a lot of polycarbonate in this housing, um, injection molded housings with inserts, uh, with the polyurethane bead for the ceiling. These are typically uh, fairly inexpensive materials, so in terms of what they're using, uh, I, I think that this is a fairly effective design in terms of uh, build quality and uh, material choice. So Antonio, what were your impressions from the uh, general teardown and what we observed? This is an incredibly easy assembly um, for the person that makes these. Literally, you start here, drop, drop, place, 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 wire at one point, and it's done. This is less than a five minute assembly. <clears throat> so um, yeah, so that about wraps up the review for the teardown and the uh, contents of the third generation Tesla wall charger. Uh, we will be doing more of these, so please check back in the coming weeks and thanks for watching.